Of course, I had the microphone off that whole time. <laughs> Let's start over. Uh, good morning. Welcome in. Uh, glad to have you here. I'm Martin Wenzel. This is Microsoft Flight Simulator, and I was talking into a mic that wasn't turned on. So that's the typical thing I do. Here over on the channel, we're at a Terrence B. Letsom International Airport for Microsoft Flight Simulator's World Tour Flight 213, flying into every country and territory in the world. Uh, here we're in the Caribbean, we're on Beef Island in the British Virgin Islands, and we're going to be headed over to Luis Munoz Marine International Airport in Carolina, Puerto Rico, just outside San Juan, the capital. Uh, Tango Juliet, Sierra Juliet is the airport uh, ICAO. Uh, we're in Cape Air Flight 4501 in the Grand Caravan, the Cessna 208B Grand Caravan. It'll be about an hour flight, I think. Uh, Switched back to DirectX 11 for for Microsoft Flight Simulator out of a DirectX 12, and I'm not seeing um, disappearing tiles anymore, which is nice. That was an issue we were having. Uh, you can see the different colors here on the apron and stuff, but that's part of the scenery itself. It's not glitches or anything. Yeah, my graphics card is running hot now. I don't know if that's DirectX 11 or if it's just scenery. It likes to do that sometimes. Uh, it's a little, we're doing an afternoon flight here. That's what's going on. That's why I'm not on live time. Got the Cape Air livery. inside to get the plane started uh, we are gonna go right here I, I always like to turn this one on the external power I'm not sure if that's should be doing a standby power and we'll turn on the battery avionics on and we'll turn on no smoking sign for the passengers to get on board. Uh, let's see, fuel boost. We'll wait on these until we start the engine itself. I'm gonna go to right here. Switch this. Want our well, get sim brief up first, and then we'll get our weights and balances panel or our Microsoft Flight Simulator. Go to payload, black fuel, 357 kilos, so that down, 361 should be good. Uh, payload 935, we have eight passengers, so we got my big butt right there. Well, I'm actually the pilot, so right there. Have my, uh, I'll have my wife be the co-pilot. There we go. Uh, let's see. All right, now we need another about 200, so we'll go about 50 here, 50 there, and 30, 32 to make it exact. There you go, 935 for our payload. I do believe the payload includes that 300 cargo. I might be wrong if I'm wrong, let me know. Uh, I think but that'll work for us. Got our cargo loaded. Let's go to the summary here. We got our flight plan uh, here, 4501, Cessna 208, Tango Uniform Papa Juliet, 16 feet, Tango Juliet, Sierra Juliet, and our alternate is uh, St. Thomas in Tango, India, Sierra. Tango flight level, we're going to be going 8,000 feet. Uh, crew, uh, cost index is zero, airtime 35 minutes, so a little bit shorter than I was 
Dang. But... Good flight. Something flying around here. Flying over. Air flight clearance. Runway heading is 255. That in there. Let's start up pretty soon. Get our flight plan going. Here, in brief. Alright. Scroll down. We are taking off from Tango Uniform Papa Juliet. Enter, we're taking runway 25. En route. Going to Mali, Mali, Mali. That's right, I could type this in. Uh, Icebird told us that last time. Actually, use your keyboard if you hit that little keyboard button there. Uh, Shaka. Next one, Puerto Rico. Yep. One is. You can't hit, keep hitting it though every time you open one. Not a big deal. And one, there's our final Puerto Rico, yes. And then our destination, which is. Tango Juliet, Sierra Juliet. Her runway 8 is what we got right now. Perfect. Looks good. Ready to go there. Uh, flight level. Okay, we got 4,000 for our takeoff. Bring that up again. Check the weather. Weather we got uh, average wind 58 degrees 19 takeoff wind or top of climb wind 57 uh, or two knots 19 knots 57 degrees two knots uh, top of climb air temperature is gonna be 13 top of descent is gonna be 60 19 temperature 14 okay, yeah they're a little bit out of a uh, date though um, but doesn't look like there's any a um, little bit of cloud cover but not a doesn't look like uh rain or anything all right Got a low vacuum whatever that means let's request startup be violent ground get four at five zero one parking six request startup care four five zero one startup approved startup approved get four at five zero one Go boost, mission, and start. We actually have color. Idle. I always forget to do this. 
Yeah, fuel pumps or the fuel floor or whatever. Always forget that. Try not to when you're doing it. All looks good there. Bionics 2 on. Radio. Ready to go. Island ground, Care 4 at 501. Request taxi. Care 4 501. Taxi to holding point. Runway 25 via Delta 3. Delta Echo. Taxi to holding point. Runway 25 via Delta 3. Delta Echo. Get 4 at 501. I really think why we take Delta really at all. All right, park brake release. A little power. The lights on. If you guys missed it, uh, last night I did kind of threw together a VATSIM flight. Got VATSIM going and I joined in on the, I think it's called the Montreal Boston, I forget what it's called, but basically city pair right there. Uh, I was planning, I, I wanted to do Boston Airport Montreal Island, and then there was going to be a Island, controller Island, Vancouver Island, Tower. Island, I wanted to fly to Vancouver then, but kind of ran out of time. Had to wait in line, taxiing out of Boston, as you usually do at VATSIM events. Alright, contact Beef Island Tower. Let's turn on the landing lights, strobe light on. Those. I actually do quite a few of these switches now. Nice. More switches you can push and do the real stuff, the better. I don't fly this plane a ton, so I don't know everything yet, but getting a little bit more comfortable in it. so much better when everything's loading in properly. Doesn't that look beautiful now? <laughs> As opposed to missing tiles and stuff. Grass looks good. All that. Beautiful. altitude before we turn here go right over the island in fact I might go around the island
port 501, contact San Juan Oceanic Center, 128 decimal 65. Contact San Juan Oceanic Center, 128 decimal 65, get four five zero one. San Juan Oceanic Center, get four five zero one at 2100, climbing flight level 40. Airport 501, radar contact, proceed direct model VI, continue climb, flight level A0. Proceed direct model VI, continue climb, flight level A0, get 4501. Get move 253, radar contact, expect Cataclysm 3, arrival ILS, approach runway 10, report when ready for descent. Alpha Tango Oscar Kilo Bravo Echo Alpha November Oscar 3 Arrival ILS Approach Runway 10 Report when ready for descent Jet Blue Q53 Island Wind 508 Descend in I kind of fly along for the Virgin Islands uh, I believe this next one going up on this is a St. John and then the next one will be uh, Charlotte Amali which is uh, I believe going to be the US Virgin Islands right there uh, we, our airport for our next flight where we're going to be landing is going to be right there. So we're going to be kind of doubling back this direction. So that's what's always kind of fun. We get to fly, be the same islands, different times of day. Alright, we're climbing and maintaining 8,000. But yep, I got a Vatsim, got Vatsim going uh, last night, or last yesterday afternoon, jumped in, did the, did a run from Quebec to Quebec to, uh, or no, uh, Boston to Montreal. Spent about a good 50 minutes at Boston. Getting started up, push back, waiting in line to take off. As is usually the case with uh, at some events. But it was really fun. Didn't have too many issues. I, there were a few, I needed a few repeats from the uh, from uh, ATC. And I do have to kind of look at my charts a little bit. I uh, departed when I was leaving Boston. I kind of climbed really fast, and they were like, "Oh, you're, you know, climb out is max five thousand feet or whatever, you know, on the charts." And I, I was like, "I don't know where the chart on the chart that said that, but uh, definitely that's something you need to do on Vatsim is read your charts. Definitely a little bit more prep." Um, my goal was I wanted to I wanted to fly Boston to Montreal because full coverage the whole way, tons of you know you had center, approach, departure ground, towers, everything in the whole area. It was really cool. And then, uh, then my plan was to do a turnaround in Montreal, get up in the air, use ATC in Montreal, get going, probably do a little bit of time acceleration, you know, probably sign off Bat Sim or whatever cases. Probably probably would have just gone out of, out of a, once I got out of center, went to Unicom, I would have just time accelerated. Uh, time accelerate over to Vancouver, and between 8 o'clock and 10 o'clock, uh, there was a guy testing for his tower certification, so. That would have been fun, but uh, I've been able to get over there. By the time I got to Montreal, it was like, I think 8 o'clock. I was kind of exhausted. <laughs> get it, exhausted for the first time getting back into VATSIM. Try to keep track of everything. That's St. Thomas right there. Puerto Rico right in front of us. Uh, let's, uh... I kind of want to fly over these islands a little bit. I'm kind of sticking close, and then we'll 
I'm gonna skip Mile Melee, even though I'm going direct there. We'll go direct to um Flying over uh, Charlotte de Mali, which is uh, one of the U.S. Virgin Islands, the, the largest one, I believe. Oh no. Again, St. Croix is the biggest, but we're not going to be flying to St. Croix. We're going to be flying right here to Charlotte de Mali, which is part of the U.S. Virgin Islands still. Even though it looks like it should kind of be, it's in the same chain as the British Virgin Islands. And St. Croix is just kind of sticking out there in the middle of nowhere. No? It's all on the ground here. There's St. Thomas right there. So that will be our airport on the next flight, which... Be a little bit shorter than this one. And we'll be in the Cessna 208 for that in the Cape Air as well, so I'll probably just we'll just do a turnaround, uh, reset the thing, get refueled and everything. Uh, we'll go a slight intermission, I'll probably um, I'll divide up the streams, so YouTube, like I'll do on YouTube, I, I like to keep the each flight its own stream. We'll do that for this, because these flights are a little bit longer. Once you get to the St. Bars, I think St. Bars will just keep it all one big stream, because those flights are all going to be like 5-10 minutes, so it's going to take more time to that. But once I, uh, once we get on the ground, I'll, we'll kind of do, a, I'll do something. We'll switch the camera or something, and I'll... Do a little housekeeping, get everything cleaned up, change the overlays a little bit. Oh, 
approach, ILS 8, route. Minimum is three eleven. Direct Joral. All right, so we're just going to go right to Joral. Skip to San Juan. Uh, four. Keep an eye out because they directed us to Joral, but might be better. It should probably going into San into the uh, VOR would have been better to skirt over here and then go around this elevation. So we'll have to keep an eye out. We'll fly manually if we have to or do heading. That way we don't run into that. Joral is going to be like right over here on the other side of that elevation. Pull the chart up. We were passing uh, Benjamin, Benjamin, bleh, Benjamin Rivera Noriega, Tango Juliet Charlie Papa, Isla de Calabra. And we're headed for Joral. Here's that kind of elevation I was talking about. It looks like 3,000. I'm going to say 3,500 feet. Radar contact. Expect category 03. Arrival ILS. Approach. Runway 10. Report when ready for descent. Alright, so we're going for Joral. Joral, we need to be 2,400 feet. We're just skipping Vesson and all that. Uh, 2,400 feet. Then down to 1600, then we have the glide slope, the ILS. I don't believe we have ILS, so we're just going to be visual. Um, go around procedures. 
Just approach, uh, climb to 2,000 feet, climb left, turn to 3,000 on heading 320, and outbound Sierra Juliet, uniform VOR, radial 4, out to DD. Hold. Transition altitude 18,000 feet. We're not even at that, so it's kind of, that doesn't do us. Airport 10 feet. A touchdown zone is 9 feet. Localizer is 110.3, final approach, 78 degrees. Capture at Patty at 1541. Minimum is 311. Here's our nav. Let's switch that. Switch the nav uh, one. All right, so we're going one one zero twenty three. Actually, have that right there. Already on. Yep, I'm going to try to do one this afternoon. Uh, I think there's this check day, Slovak day, uh, Long Vaughn has, they have some stuff going on, Munich has something going on all around the same time, so uh, I'm going to try to figure out where I want to take off and where I want to land, and hopefully we'll be able to, within that three hour window, take off, get off the ground, deal with ATC, and and then uh, land somewhere else where we have full coverage. That'll be pretty cool. That is the plan, at least. We need to be at 2,400 feet at Joral. They haven't given us a clearance to bend. I guess, if we, I guess the straight line. Yeah, we're gonna straight line. Joral's actually right there. <coughs> I don't know what's going on with my camera. Right there we have a uh, Shaka. I'm guessing that's the town of Shaka. Same as the uh, waypoint. We'll have San Juan further up the coast. Okay, we need to be careful because there is a Fernando Luis Ribas Dominici uh, airport as well. We can be mistaken for Luis Munoz. Uh, so want to go for the first airport that we see, not the one that's a little bit after it. The R airport, and then just, just a little bit further is another runway. There's another airport. Frontier 
Alright, I'm throwing in the link for the next stream. There. In the message and it just spams the crap out of uh, the overlay down there. What are we doing here? Are we getting a clearance? Top of the sign right there. And I'm going to post in the uh, world tour section on Discord, the flight plan and all that.
Right, there's San Juan. tight turn at Joral, but obviously we're in a smaller plane than than the American and an American 321 that's coming in. Actually, they're probably landing right now. All right, so we can see a light right there. That's actually probably another plane. That's the airport. So there is another one yeah, right there, that other airport right there where we probably saw that plane. That's uh, Fernando Luis Rivas Dominici. We gotta be careful and we don't get distracted by that as we'll be kind of making our turn right there. There's the airport, there's San Juan. into like a sizable city I think. Twenty four hundred feet. Actually they only cleared us four thousand. Oh well. <laughs> if we were on Vatsim it'd be one thing. I I always say that. If I was on Vatsim real life, it'd be real one thing. If we're in the sim. Make a little mistake like that, not a big deal. Vat sim they'll get on your case for that. Airport five zero one maintain two thousand two hundred. Contact San Juan approach one one nine or decimal. Twenty two hundred. Remember we are uh, capturing Patty or Stand capture the glide slope at uh, fifteen forty one.
Overturn. There's that other. I think that's. Airport right there? No, it's not. Might be it. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, that might be the other airport right there. We gotta kinda of figure out where to park. San Juan ground, get four at five zero one. Runway vacated with Sierra five. Sierra four five zero one. Taxi two. Parking one seven one five zero five. November. Taxi two. <coughs> right there I'm not sure I want to look for a kind of general aviation parking obviously not a gate hey Matei 
How are you this morning? I park it at FPO. Terribly clear where we park at this airport. <laughs> as good a spot as any, right? Taxi lights off, strobe off. We'll just keep it on that, uh, and then we'll we'll go to a quick intermission here. So yeah, Mate, uh, I just there's a posted there the link to the next stream. I'm going to uh, go over there for flight from San Juan over to St. Thomas. So click on that link, get that open in another browser window. Uh, we're gonna pull up pull up my various things here. I should have open. Alright. So Valanta, let's get over there. Let's check out the uh, light view. Nice straightforward flight. We didn't even really follow the flight plan too much. We got a lot of directs. Uh, out of Terrence B. Let us some. Went around uh, the main island here. Skirted past our next airport that we're going to be flying on this next flight. Great shot over San Juan and a firm landing of negative 47 feet per minute. Flight time 36 minutes, not bad. Eight passengers, landing speed 86 knots, 98 miles covered on that flight. Right, and we have, let's get the world tour map over here. Oh, yes. There it is. Because it doesn't want to do things. Hey, right, world tour map. Everywhere, everywhere we've been so far on this uh, world tour. And today, flying into Puerto Rico, which is actually part of the United States, a territory of the United States. Uh, next flight, we're going to be... As I said, flying right over here to these three islands. I think this one right here, uh, Charlotte d'Amerlie, and uh, the U.S. Virgin Islands. So stick around for that. It'll be very quick turnaround here. I just gotta adjust a few things. Um, so I'm gonna end this end this YouTube stream. Send you guys over to that other, to the next stream, and I will see you in probably five ten minutes. It won't be that long at all. 
get out of that. So kind of in a lonely section of San Juan here, airport. All right, well, I will see you in just a few minutes. We'll go to an intermission screen for you guys on Twitch, on YouTube. Just jump over to that link. It's pinned right above. And I'll take you to the next flight, which is uh, Puerto Rico to the U.S. Virgin Islands. I will see you in just a few minutes. Oh. And here we go. Thank <laughs> you.